Uh, I know John spoke a little bit about uh, Mark Anthony K. Uh, I just want to add that uh, Mark's been an, an important part of, of LAFC from the very beginning. Uh, on the field, off the field, just incredible contributions. He's an excellent guy. And uh, I've really enjoyed working with him and wish him nothing but the best moving forward. Thanks, Bob. We're going to start here with Katya. Go ahead. Thanks, Ben. Hi, Bob. Nice to see you. I want to ask you how the group took the news and just what does it mean with Mark's departure also on the field? How do you see other guys stepping up? Uh, Mark has a really good relationship with all the players here. Um, everybody respected what he brought to the club. Um, there's been, he's had different conversations with players um, in this past period. And so my take is that the players uh, understood his situation and weren't totally surprised by the fact that he uh, has been traded. Um, as far as the rest of our team, uh, yeah, Mark's missed different games. We feel like we've uh, gotten good efforts from different guys. Uh, certainly Sifu's uh, emergence, his high level of play in this last stretch has been something that we're all uh, very excited about. I think he, as I mentioned uh, the other day, started the season a little slow, wasn't that fit and sharp when he arrived, but has worked himself into things in a great way and has been one of our best players in this last stretch. And one more, speaking of Sifu, I wanted to ask you a little bit more about his emergence. We're, we're doing a special piece on him of what have you seen in particular this season that wasn't there maybe the last season and, and how he has stepped up, maybe the, the, the chip on his shoulder that he mentioned at some point not going uh, to the national team, if, if that helped in a way at all. Uh, yeah, interestingly enough, it does help sometimes when they're when they're staying here. Um, we we welcome when guys go away with the national team, but if they get in a situation where they're away and they're not playing regularly, uh, and and as we know in different moments with national teams, there's not that much training between games, and so we've seen situations where guys have left and come back and we've needed time to get them up and running again. So I think in Sifu's case, uh, he was moving along at the time of the international break and by remaining here, we saw his confidence um, grow higher as he got sharper, as he made more plays. Uh, we've always felt that he's a, a midfielder who's capable of doing really good things as he moves forward. Uh, and so he's scored some really good goals uh, I think you've seen him more committed in games. He's putting more into it. He's given more for the team, uh, and that's a product of fitness. So his confidence, his fitness level, and just the sharpness of certain passes, seeing things quicker, uh, those are things that have really uh, been at a good level for him in this last stretch. Thank you. Thank you, Dave Denholm. About you and touched on it a little bit with Sifu, but you talk about now with Mark Anthony, obviously with the trade, talk a little bit more about the depth in the midfield and maybe the comfort level there with even beyond Jose and the, the guys that you're working with. Uh, Latif is still a steady player in the midfield, good energy. Um, uh, when he's at his best, his ability to pick up loose balls, make pressure on opponents, um, get out of tight spots and, and keep the ball moving. Those are important things. So I think that that's uh, been at a good level lately. And we've seen different moments from both Poncho and Bryce. Uh, Poncho, um, solid performances of late, simple passing, a uh, guy who in the midfield defensively uh, does a good job of getting in on plays, coming away with some balls. And then Bryce still has some special qualities and just uh, getting him more time to uh, get comfortable on the field. But we've seen some good things from Bryce in, in small minutes. Great, thank you. Any deal, sir? 
Hey, Bob, how's it going? Good, thanks. Bob, you've talked about in the past of, of Mark's leadership qualities really being an integral part of his role. I'm interested to know if you've seen kind of, you said he has different conversations with different players. If you've kind of seen that translate to some of the younger players, which is his ability to kind of help some of these newer guys get accustomed to the system. Yeah, Mark always had a good way with all his teammates. Um, and, and we've uh, encouraged a group of guys in the last few years to take bigger roles. Uh, in addition to Mark, we've, we've done that with Diego and Edward and Eddie Segura. Uh, little by little, we're trying to get Murray to take a bigger role where he's more comfortable uh, pushing teammates and encouraging guys, Sifu. So, it's an ongoing process to get more guys to be part of the leadership. When you look at our team, uh, yes, Carlos is captain, Jordan is an experienced veteran, but getting these other guys that, that have been here uh, for a number of seasons to take bigger roles and become more uh, important in helping teammates, that's something that we've certainly uh, certainly worked hard on, and, and I think we, we see that part helping a lot. Charlie? Hey, Bob. Charles Gomez, MLS Soccer here. Um, <clears throat> uh, I wondered if you could share a little insight into your sort of cost-benefit analysis of not just Mark, but players uh, in that sort of situation where I know you have your short-term needs and desires, and then you have to balance that with the long-term. And is that calculation evolving in, in modern MLS as, as players become more valuable commodities? I, I, I think... There's always different factors when you look at players. Um, when Mark got here, uh, it was an opportunity. And uh, he picked up ideas quickly and, and he made the most of it. And on his 2018 got cut short with a bad injury. Um, he continued, you know, to, he worked very hard on the rehab. So as he got going in 2019, he was a huge part of our team. Uh, and, and then as time goes on, uh, when players are going out with national teams, playing qualifiers, playing in gold cups, uh, you, you try to assess where guys are in different moments. Where are they physically? Where are they in terms of the situation here? How do we keep? moving things along and uh, yeah there, there's always a part uh, in these situations where uh, you assess the interest that there is in a player where we are as a club uh, the last you know I, I would say 2020 and, and the first half of 2021 have been challenging because with the pandemic some things that we thought might develop, whether it's selling guys, uh, things have slowed down. And, and so, and, and, and we know last year, 2020, start, stop, start, stop. Um, so many challenges. And, and, and I just think that we're trying to continue, continually make sure that, that the group of guys that are here are really motivated, that, that you know what, they appreciate everything that's gone on at LAFC. Uh, they, they are really committed, and that that's their, you know, that's their focus. And, and and so, at different moments, you have to assess where guys are in the whole thing. And uh, you know, I think, as I mentioned, that Mark, uh, you know, his, his his ideas on things have were a little bit different than when he first arrived. He was still a team guy, still a lot into it, but there are other factors that he's considering and he, he he knew that there was interest in him from other clubs um, he told me that so uh, you know and again how how he found out whether the agents are involved but at a certain point uh, when when a player is talking about the fact that there are other teams interested then you know part of we have, what we have to do is assess what that means here thank you Thank you. And this last question for Bob, Josh Gross. Hey, Bob. Um, in terms of what Mark brought on the field, uh, what's, what's going to be the most difficult aspect of what he brought to a place now that you don't have uh, the ability to call him uh, onto the team? Uh, I think we all know that, that in the midfield, Mark was a two-way presence. Uh, he had versatility in the midfield. He could play deep in certain moments. 
Um, in other moments, he moved up. His ability to play forward passes, find the right windows. Uh, he was part of a lot of really good goals for us. Uh, so just an all-round contributor in the midfield who uh, helped us when we lost balls in terms of winning it back quickly. Uh, you know, I, I, I think uh, he did a great job of picking up ideas on how we wanted to play and not only bringing that into his game, but making sure that the guys around him in the midfield understood those things. And um, coming into this match uh, against Minnesota, how, how's the energy been um, in, in the couple of days of training that you've had? Yeah, it's been a, a stretch of, of a lot of games in a short amount of time. Um, I think that we were on a roll. We had won three games in a row. Um, we were incredibly disappointed to let points go at the end or a point go at the end against Portland. Um, we were very honest about the, the first half against Vancouver. Uh, not enough guys were, were really ready at the start of that game. Uh, it's the first time all year where we fell behind 2-0. Um, we had moments in the first half where we still won balls in good positions, but in terms of the sharpness to make more of those plays, not great. Uh, we did really well uh, to get back to 2-1 before half. Uh, in that situation, we did win a ball. Raheem made a good play, played inside to Edward. Uh, Edward got away from the, the first defender and saw the small window and played an excellent pass to Carlos. And Carlos really took it well uh, and finished with his right foot. Um, we changed uh, you know, four changes at halftime, plus we changed the way we played. Um, the first half, uh, there were moments when Edward got the ball where I felt that Latif wasn't in good position to get the next pass. Sifu was too high, and we didn't provide good enough options. And Vancouver was right around midfield, uh, trying to get after balls quickly to see if they could produce transition. Uh, when we changed in the second half, it also altered a little bit the way we built up. Uh, center backs spread out a little bit. Uh, and I thought it made it more difficult for Vancouver to press us in the, in the middle of the field. Uh, and then we started the half finding more options going forward, uh, created some good chances. It took us too long to get to 2-2. Two -two. Uh, when we did, it was an excellent goal. Uh, and then in the end, after we got to 2-2, two -two, I don't think we did a good enough job of still pushing forward, connecting passes, having the right distances, and so we, we lost some, some balls in difficult spots where we were spread out after that and allowed Vancouver to come back into the game. And uh, we were lucky um, on the ball that came across that it was offside. Um, but I didn't like what happened after it was 2-2. So a little bit of a roller coaster game. Uh, we looked at it, we talked about it. Uh, I think we've been pretty consistent of late. Uh, we've had a lot of games where we've limited other teams' chances. Uh, quite honestly, even against Vancouver, their number, their total number of chances wasn't high, but still there were moments where they threatened us and we saw that. Uh, and we felt that it had a lot to do with um, us losing some bad balls and not doing a good enough job when they pressed us finding the next play. And just looking forward to Minnesota, is the energy activity uh, just a mentality piece? Or is it a, a pure phys physical uh, response? How, how, do you, how do you get into your players' heads that, hey, we have to, we have to get in the front foot from, from the start? No, that's up to the players. I mean, obviously, as coaches, you, you find every way possible to, in what you do in training, in your loads, uh, in your video messages, in different individual talks. Um, but the ability to make sure that, you know what, every time you step on the field, you have a clear idea of the things that we're about as a team. Um, you've prepared yourself to be on the field and be ready from the start. Uh, you know, the, the, the best teams have 11 guys engaged all the time. They, they, there's not too many times when the best teams play where uh, a number of guys are sort of uh, falling asleep at the same time. And that, that's that gotta be a standard for us. Uh, on our best days, we see a high rate of, of getting that part, getting guys involved, staying connected, uh, and, and on other days, if, if, if we're a little too slow or in certain moments 
uh, some players are not as sharp and tuned in as they need to be, yeah, then, then we've got to look hard at, at why and what we can still do different. Uh, was it a fitness issue? Was, uh, was it the right choice to play that guy? So, uh, yeah, we, we were disappointed, as I said, um, with Vancouver. And, and, you know, when you make four changes at halftime, and I think that speaks for itself, um, I thought overall the response in the second half to get the 2-2 was quite good. Uh, and then I thought we should have done more at 2-2 to finish the game and, and take three points. So these are still steps for us. Um, I think if you take the whole season, there's been a lot of very good minutes. Uh, overall, you would still say that defensively we don't give much away in terms of real chances, real shots, box entries. Um, there are still our moments where we allow a little bit too much transition. Usually that's when we get spread out and, and guys end up on the ball getting stuck or trying too much. Uh, and then in the attacking part of it, uh, the, the, the pure sharpness, the kind of pass that Edward makes Carlos, Carlos's ability to take that ball, finish it. Um, you know, it was, I said uh, in the press conference after the game, it was nice to see Cheeky um, when he got forward, make a really good choice to pick out Sifu at the back post um, because we get into those positions regularly. And now the timing of the pass, is it a ball that gets played across? Does it get cut back? Do you clip a ball to the back post? These are all different options that you've got to be able to take advantage of. So hopefully that's a good sign moving forward.